So as of roughly 12 hours ago, I have completed the main campaign of 2024's Destiny 2, The Final Shape, capping off a decade's worth of storytelling in Bungie's Destiny universe. I feel weird saying that now that I've actually said it out loud. I wanted to sit down and get some immediate thoughts out. And while I may do an extended video somewhere down the road, I wanted this one to be mostly unscripted. I have notes, but I wanted it to be mostly unscripted, if for no other reason than to make sure I kept it as personal as I could. Now that we're at the end of 10 years of Destiny, which was the original kind of that, that original pitch of a 10 year long saga, now that we're at the end of it, I just wanted to sit down and talk about what it meant to me. Because it did mean a lot to me, personally and creatively and, and otherwise. So let's get into it. So this might come out of left field for anybody who doesn't personally know me. But the first thing I wanted to talk about here in my notes was uh, to talk about how Destiny filled the narrative void in my life that had been left by Bionicle. <laughs> To explain this further, I am of a certain generation where Bionicle came onto the scene at a very formative time in my life, and I followed it somewhat religiously from 2001 to when it originally ended in 2010. And without Bionicle, I don't think I would have considered a future in storytelling. The story of Bionicle was so dense and rich and at moments quite profound. And even still, sometimes I go back and I revisit story elements. And as an adult, I still feel that same profundity that I did as a child, which I think is a testament to the storytelling. But from 2001 to 2010, that was my, you know, Lord of the Rings. It was Bionicle. And then I didn't really have anything like that until I tried Destiny for the first time with the Rise of Iron expansion. And so I dove in at Rise of Iron and I was hooked. The rest was history. And so then Destiny became as important a kind of storytelling touchstone for me over the next 10 years or almost 10 years at this point that Bionicle had been in the decade prior. You know, often as writers, we get kind of bogged down in the idea, the concept of world building, because we want to create worlds that are very interesting and very rich, that will, you know, draw the viewer, the reader, the player, whoever into them. And the world of Destiny was definitely that. And so given the richness of Destiny's storytelling and the richness of its world, I have kind of found myself just constantly thinking about it, pouring over little details in my mind to the point where I had internalized enough of the world that I found it to be a, a very good creative outlet when I was struggling with writer's block on personal projects. I'm hardly on Reddit at all, but that was the reason I made a Reddit account was to dive into the Destiny lore subreddit and then tangentially into like the, the Destiny fashion subreddit and the Destiny journals subreddit, which was the kind of the fan fiction subreddit. And I even contributed a short story just very recently to a Destiny fanzine, the One Last Wish zine. Go check it out. There will be a link in the description. And in addition to writing, I have made more videos about Destiny than any other video game. 21 videos, or 22, with this one, uh, at last count, across two channels. One of my favorites, though, that I think was the first video I ever made about Destiny was an edit of uh, my clan trying to get Flawless in uh, Crota's End. Okay, there we go. Run. Get to run. the lantern. Hole. Okay, what's up in the hole? Find the rock. Find the rock. All right, there's going to be a hole. There's going to be a hole. Right. Yeah, right here. I certainly had, you know, my favorite expansions, the usual ones that people all mention, Taken King, Witch Queen, Forsaken, you know, the big ones. But I will be a diehard Shadowkeep apologist until the day I die. If Shadowkeep has a million fans, I am one of them. If Shadowkeep has no fans, I am dead. And that, more specifically, is because all of the extended narrative content 
wrapped up in Shadow Keep is some of my favorite storytelling of all time. The story of the first Crota fire team is... I mean, it's interesting because in the game, we still really only have seen bits and pieces of it. But what we have seen is so beautiful and and heartbreaking and inspiring. It's just a fascinating, incredibly engrossing story of perseverance and hope and fighting against impossible odds. If I have one wish for Destiny's legacy, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, it's that we all come to a collective understanding that Eris Morn is one of the greatest characters in the contemporary science fiction canon. My brother, just the other day, he texted me and he said, hey, is Saint-14 the best character in Destiny? And I said, no, it's it's Eris Morn. Saint-14's great, Saint-14's story is great, um, but Eris is just... You know, Ikora and Zavala and some of the other kind of the key players, we really only got to explore their stories in the last two or three years. Whereas Eris, we've been with her since Dark Below, which was the first expansion of Vanilla D1. And I'd be remiss not to mention that my love of the first Crota Fire team did manifest in 2022 in the form of a six episode limited series that I would desperately, desperately want Powerhouse Animation to animate. Uh, if anybody knows anybody, please put me in touch with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, six episodes, Powerhouse Animated, first Crota Fire Team. Come on. Despite the fact that, if you are a subscriber to this channel, you may remember that the last video I made about Destiny 2 was a little bit of a dour one, uh, speculating about its future. Despite that, Bungie has stuck the landing. It's really kind of astounding to me, especially as a storyteller, and having spent the last decade plus of my life thinking about stories and, and the construction of stories, it is crazy, truly crazy, that a 10 year long story like this that has been shuffled through likely dozens of different writers lands with such clarity. It's really good. Like anything that goes on for so long, it's, it's had its ups and downs. It's had the moments where you've all been like, I don't know if this is how they wanted that to land, but when it counted, they got it done, and the final shape gets it done. But the final shape really is the kind of story that only works with 10 years of storytelling behind it. It's the kind of story that only works because of the meticulous work of its writers to develop the characters and, and set up all these different pieces that they're gonna pay off. They keep talking about, you know, if the witness wins, it's the, it's the end of everything. So nobody's on the sidelines. Everybody is there. The Elixir are there. The Cabal are there. The Hive are there. Bungie, of course, is no stranger to kind of playing with the, oh, the enemy's now the ally now. They did that back in Halo 2. But Destiny kind of took it to another level. We're all through D1. You know, we have all these alien races, enemy factions that we're fighting, the Vex, the Hive, the Cabal, the Fallen, and then throughout the course of D2, just very slowly and deliberately and thoughtfully, you know, bringing them into the fold of, you know, humanity, leading up to then this final battle, the 12-person activity that kind of serves as the final storytelling beat of Destiny's 10 year long light and darkness saga I think it was so smart for that to be the last mission because it was kind of the first moment where we as the players got to experience kind of the like the big battles that we've always read about you know your twilight gaps your great disaster 
where we've read about these huge conflicts, the Reef War, and suddenly we actually get to be a part of one. You know, I've applied to narrative positions at Bungie several times over the past five or six years. And I got to the end of the final shape and I was like, oh, I'm kind of happy they didn't hire me because I don't know if I would have been able to, you know, land the story like they did. The ending, ending, like the final moments of the final shape of the Light and Darkness saga. We've had all this grand kind of, you know, huge storytelling beats. And then it ends so intimately with this rather beautiful bookend from the very first moment of D1 with your ghost you know, waking you up outside the wall in the Cosmodrome to this final conclusory moment in The Pale Heart. And then, I mean, there's also a really beautiful kind of intimate epilogue in The Last City after that. But I wasn't expecting that. I was kind of expecting the big, big storytelling beat. And then a big, you know, triumphant fanfare. And then that would be it. Kind of a big moment, big ending for a big story. But the fact that they ended it so small and intimate, I think betrays such confidence in the storytelling that, uh, you know, like I said, I don't think they should have hired me because I I don't know if I would have thought to do that and have it end on this really beautiful moment that you wouldn't expect given the kind of story that has been told up to that point. It's just really good. That's getting close to the end of, of uh, my initial thoughts that I, you know, jotted down here. I'm incredibly satisfied with the story that we got, the story that was told over the past 10 years, where I really, I'm, I'm going to cherish this story and these characters and the time that I spent with them. Yeah. This is where I get to the part of the video where I just say thank you. I know it's been fairly, we'll politely say troublesome in the game dev space these past couple years. Um, and so if, if you work at Bungie, if you have worked at Bungie, thank you for your contribution to this world that has affected me so deeply over the past 10 years. It's really special and it will always hold a really special place in my heart. And uh, yeah. That's it. I'm Jake Terrio. This is Ooh, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the recording time. It's not good. It's going to be a a bear for me to edit, but uh, yeah, that's me, Jake Terrio. I'm going to try to edit this video to make it into uh, another episode of Subpixel Spotlight. Thank you for watching. <laughs>